Hello everyone, assalamu alaikum. I hope that all of you are doing extremely well. Um, so today we are doing or continuing our lesson four, which is on basics of nomenclature. And today we will be discussing alkenes, which is another homologous series. Um, now, the rules that we have already talked about are, well, here's the rule number one, that you count the longest consecutive carbon chain to decide the prefix. So I hope this one is clear to you, especially after uh, the last or the previous lesson on alkanes. If not, I would suggest that you first watch that video and then you know, move forward with alkenes. And the second thing is you look at the functional group to decide the suffix. The suffix is basically what comes at the end and the prefix is what comes at the very beginning of the name. Now, we also stated uh, how all CC single bonds suggest that something is an alkane. Now, in this case, because we're talking about alkenes, in whichever molecule you see a CC double bond, right? So wherever you see a CC double bond, you should realize that this is an alkene or has an alkene group. And the suffix, that we use in this case is in. So let me give you an example. So for example, uh, you know, when we're talking about the root words, we start with uh, met, right? But met is not possible in this case. Why? Because you can't have a double bond in a single carbon, right? So let's start with our second one, which is, um, uh, you know, we can start with uh, eat or basically et and then prop and then but. So just think about it now. Ed, prop, but are suggesting, uh, you know, how many carbons are there in the longest carbon chain. Um, and if I end all of these with ene, so ethene or propene or butene, this is suggesting that these basically have these CC double bonds in them. So uh, the third rule that we need to encounter at this point in order to do the nomenclature for alkenes and also the coming homologous series is that... Um, well, the carbon with which the double bond is attached is given the higher, highest priority. Now, in this case, I have specifically written double bond over here. You can definitely, you know, as we go along, we'll see that in haloalkanes or alcohols, this will be replaced by the functional group. So, for example, the hydroxyl group, the OH group, or uh, the halides, or like, for example, the fluorine, chlorine, bromine. Um, so, but in this case, you know, we we, we won't, uh, we, we're kind of treating that double bond as the functional group. So, we are still that the carbon with which this double bond is attached is going to be given the highest priority. What we mean by that is that this is the carbon which we want to give the lowest possible number, all right? So we want to assign it, uh, want to assign it lowest number possible. So let's check this out and maybe this will start making sense. So our first example in this case, let's count our longest carbon chain first. So you can see this is one carbon, second carbon, third carbon, and fourth carbon. So as I see that there are four carbons here, the first thing that I can decide for sure is that the prefix is going to be but. Now, what do I see next? I see this double bond right over here. So there's a single double bond and all of those are single bonds. So this suggests me that it has the alkene functional group. And so the suffix is going to be ene. Now, let's talk about, uh, you know, just for a minute. What if I take this double bond right over here and I shift it over here, right? What would we name it then? Let's look at the next example and then I'll, you know, maybe it, it will make more sense what I'm about to say. So in this case, I have one, two, three, and four carbons again, right? So this tells me that this is again going to have the prefix but. Well, what's the functional group in here? I see a double bond, right? So this suggests me that this will be ending with an ene. But well, wait a minute. Uh, the molecule that we saw at the top is also butene and the molecule that we're seeing right now is also butene. Then how will we differentiate between this butene and this butene? Where the double bond in this case is attached over here and in this case, it is attached in the middle. So the way that we actually do this, this these are actually uh, these are actually like you can say these are different forms of butene, and we like kind of um, uh, you know do this later on as we go in the program. But uh, for now, what I what I want you to realize is that 
the double bond in this case is located over here and in this case the double bond is located in the middle so what do we do in this case uh, in the naming in order to make sure or justify or tell the reader just by the name where the double bond is located we're going to number our carbons and when we number our carbons what i'm going to ensure is that this rule number three that the carbon with which the double bond is attached is given the highest pri highest priority so okay how about for the first case i start numbering from this place so i say one two, three, four. Well, okay, is there a way to uh, kind of, uh, you know, do it differently? Well, yes, there is. How about I start numbering from here? So one, two, three, four. Now, in this case, if you look over here, uh, you have, you know, if, if I were to be very optimistic, I have this third carbon over here, which is involved in a double bond, right? Um, so I can perhaps add a three over here in order to say that the double bond is located uh, you know, between the third carbon and the fourth carbon. But what I can do instead is if I follow this notation, you can clearly see that this is attached with the first carbon and the second carbon. And, you know, we're actually in, in the double bond, hum jo carbon jis pe lowest number aara hota hai, musko dekh rahe hote hai. so we're looking at the first carbon here. So in this case, the double bond is attached uh, at the first location, or you can say it is attached with the first uh, and the second carbon. So what I can do now is that in order to indicate it, I'll take this in and I'll kind of shift it over here. And in the middle, I'm going to write one. What does this tell me? What this tells me is that butte is telling me there are four carbons. One is telling me that my double bond is located in a place where uh, the double bond is in involving the first carbon and obviously the carbon that comes next to it, which is two. And in tells me that there is a double bond indeed. So this is but one in. Now, if we come to the case um, over here, in this case, if I number this, I can either do one, two, three, four, or I can do one, two, three, four. Now, in either case, if you notice, the carbon or, or the lowest numbered carbon which is involved in the double bond is two. In this case, it is also two. So you can, you know, use any of these. It doesn't matter uh, uh, because in, you know, in, in both of these notations or numberings possible, we are getting two as our lowest possible number on the highest priority carbon. So what I'll do now is that to indicate this, we're going to take this in, shift it here, and I'm going to add two in. So again, this butte is telling me we have four carbons in the longest carbon chain. This two is telling me, or this in perhaps is telling me that there's a double bond involved. And the two is telling me that the double bond is involving the second carbon and then definitely the third one or the gum that comes next to it. So this is how we actually roll with alkenes. Now let's look at the next example. Over here, I have the longest carbon chain as two. And so the name perhaps would over here be Eth, all right and uh, i see a double bond involved so i definitely know it's a it's a alkene so i i write ene so it is ethene um now in this case as you can see if you number like this or this it doesn't really matter right because the carbon in either case that if we are to consider the lowest numbered carbon it's still going to be one in either case and so usually for ethene we don't um we don't use eth uh, eth one en or eth two en we just say well it is ethene because there's no other way to shift the double bond or to translate that double bond in the molecule right in this case we can actually shift the bond you know if over here it's between uh, one and two and over here it's between two and three so we can actually move that double bond but in ethene there's no way to actually move that mol uh, uh, that that double bond it is going to be located always it's going to be located between these two carbons so there's no really point of writing um eth one in or something like that we just call it as ethene i hope that makes sense now let's look at the last example and this one is going to be slightly tricky so i want you to make sure that you are with me uh till this point now let's go so i see this is my first carbon my second carbon third and i can see this is fourth and fifth and sixth so this is definitely the longest carbon chain and not this right over here right so i have like six carbons involved so i know that my prefix is going to be hex and I can see a double bond, so I know it's going to be an ene, all right? Now, because the double bond is involved, you know, I, I'll always uh, obviously number it uh, in a such a way that my carbon with, uh, you know, the carbon uh, which is involved in the double bond gets the highest priority. So I can actually call this as hex one ene. The reason why we're writing one over here, not here, is because as I said, in this case, I can translate this double bond throughout the molecule. So because there are other possibilities possible, so we are mentioning explicitly that this is hex one ene. 
for the case of one you can even omit this and if you just say hexene it is still understood that the double bond is uh, going to be between the first and the second uh, but in other cases like in the case of butene you cannot omit that too you have to be explicit about it um, in other words if you just say butene they're going to assume this one uh, the one in which the double bond is concerned with the first carbon all right now even apart from that there's one more thing that we need to be careful about we i see a methyl group over here and the and this methyl group is actually attached with the fourth carbon, right? So I can actually also, I have to name this, right? So I'm going to say four and I'm going to say four methyl. And this is going to be the name four methyl hex one in is the name of this molecule. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Khuda